Paris Johnson Jr. must be absolutely elite in 2024. Why? Remember, if you can't protect Kyler Murray, none of this is going to work. Let's discuss. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Cardinals, Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner underscore. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Please go to the YouTube channel, search Locked On Arizona Cardinals. Hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on. Um, if you want to go leave a review, or if you're an auditory only, audible only, audible? Nope, auditory, yep. Uh, thanks for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen, free wherever you get your podcast, and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We've been in Phoenix doing sports radio since 2011. Uh, hosted this podcast since 2017. Thank you for being along this journey with me. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NFL for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms do apply. I wanted to do a bonus X Factor episode. And the reason why I wanted to do that is there are three players who were drafted in 2023 who are set to take a leaps in 2024 and will have a direct correlative on the Cardinals' success in 2024 because of the positions they play and the ceilings that they have. And it's, you know, I, I wasn't expected to do this. I was going to have a guest on today, but I felt like we needed to talk about BJ Ojolari and what he did towards the tail end of last season and the trajectory for him for 2024 is being an X factor out of the pass rush room. I'll talk about that in the third segment. Garrett Williams played nine games in 2023 after coming off an ACL injury at Syracuse that shortened his 2022 college career. Um, showed flashes, need to see more X factor from the cornerback room. And then number one, Paris Johnson Jr. I, let's just get into it right away. Paris Johnson Jr. needs to be elite in 2024. And there, you know, the jury was out on Paris Johnson Jr. during 2023. And I was a huge proponent of his, you know, positivity towards his performance. Was he great? No. Was he bad? Absolutely not. Did he go against some of the toughest fronts in football for the entirety of the season? Oh, uh, yes. Oh, uh, yes, he did. And he held his own. On the right side, a non-natural position for him. And... All he did was play well, okay? What you don't want to hear, a couple things out of an offensive lineman. One, their name, because that means that things aren't going well. They never get the credit they deserve, even though it's, you know, arguably the most important position group in football. And the other thing you don't want to hear is, oh, no. Every day, as you know this, I allude to it fairly often. The one thing you don't want to experience, you don't want to hear coming out of your mouth when talking about a first, you know, a first round pick, especially a top 10 pick on the offensive line is, oh no, he's not ready. Oh no, what have we done? What have we done? And you didn't see that last year. Not even close. Not even close. Did he get burned a couple of times by elite pass rushers? Sure. Any offensive lineman's going to deal with that. Let alone, you know, save a rookie who's playing a, a position he's never played before or has played but hasn't played at that level before. He's a left tackle. He protected Kyler Murray from his position, protected Joshua Dobbs from his position. Let's just throw out the Clayton too here. And having Will Hernandez and Yalti Froholt, you know, to the left of him helped because it was a, it allowed him to play his position and not have to cover for an inferior right guard. He didn't have to cover for a collapsing pocket up the middle every time where he would have to, you know, change his positional value and overcompensate for other players who weren't doing their job. He didn't have to do that. He was able to play right tackle and he did it well. The X factor for 2024 is he's moving to his natural position. The left guard position is going to get a bump in production because it was, I mean, it was, it wasn't great. It wasn't good last year. And he's another year into the league. Another year in the system, a full year with Kyler Murray, you hope. And without protecting Kyler Murray, none of this is going to work. When I say elite, I'm not saying all pro. I'm saying sniff and pro bowl. There's a lot of great left tackles in the league. If you don't have a left tackle, the offensive line is nothing. We will see very quickly with the murderer's row the Cardinals have early on. If Paris Johnson Jr. is it. 
And there's no indication that he won't be. You do have that fail safe where you can move Jonah Williams over to the left if Paris Johnson is not ready for the game yet. It takes offensive linemen a couple years sometimes. Not everybody can be Tristan Wurz, who has Tom Brady as his quarterback his rookie year, and he shatters PFF grades for Super Bowls as a rookie. It does, it's not always like that. Penny Sewell struggled early on a bit. Andrew Thomas struggled a bit, and now he's looked as one of the best left tackles in the league. Jedrick Wills played very well early on, and he's kind of regressed because he can't stay on the field. But Paris Johnson Jr. must be elite in 2024 if you want the Cardinals to win more games than they lose. Kyler Murray's time in the pocket, time to assess coverage, time to let wide receivers, tight ends, and running backs get open is predicated first and foremost on Paris Johnson Jr. ability to protect his blind side. And sure, the rest of the offensive line, they're equally as important Almost, left tackle is most important. And nowadays, right tackle is equal, almost is equally as important because, you know, pass rushers don't just line up on one side like they used to. But if Paris Johnson Jr. can take that leap this year, the Cardinals are going to be cooking. It's going to help James Conner. It's going to help Trey Benson. It's going to help... Like, imagine not needing a tight end to chip every single pass play. Imagine if Trey McBride didn't have to be used as a blocker, even though he's a great, you know, he's a great uh, blocking tight end. Imagine having having, uh, Trey McBride on the line with a fake chip just scream up the middle up the scene and have Kyler Murray hitting him with nobody guarding him, nobody defending him. All of that is predicated upon Paris Johnson Jr. and the rest of the offensive line's performance. Some of it is on Kyler Murray to be able to adapt, to be able to grow. But let me tell you something, like being able to run the ball, it changes everything. It absolutely changes everything. It makes, you know, obviously you have you have to <laughs> – you have to block for gaps. You have to have your schemes ready for, for run blocking. But that's where the Cardinals ate last year. And it's only going to be better this year if everybody stays healthy. So Paris Johnson Jr. is in a great situation to thrive. And we just need to see him do it. And I think we will. If Paris Johnson's elite in 2024, there's no ceiling on what this team could be. Alex Nancy locked on Cardinals. Garrett Williams must take a step forward to have, you know, to be a running mate for Max Melton. And you could see the one-two punch that the Cardinals have been desperately needing. Period. It's not even a since. It's period. That's next. Locked on Cardinals, your team. Every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by the Game Time app. I love the Game Time app. Okay. I'm all, I love the finals also. Game three, tonight. It makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the tip-off. And with killer last-minute deals, all in prices, view from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. Like, but, it, you know, if, if if you're a baseball fan, you want to go to see Diamondbacks games. If you're a stand-up comedy fan and you want to go see the plethora of stand-up comedians that come through Phoenix, Game time maps where you want to be. I bought Green Day tickets, concert, Chase Field in September. I got to see my vantage point from the seats before I bought them. Like, oh, sweet. I'll spend an extra 20 bucks to get that vantage point. And I did. Take all the guesswork out of buying tickets with the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account. Use code locked on NFL for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account or redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Second year X Factors. I wanted to keep it going. X Factor is such a funny thing to discuss because the definitions are different for everybody in different position groups and, and where they are along in their journey as an NFL player. But all these guys are second year guys. They're all top, you know, the first three round picks. And they're all poised to explode in 2024, just like many other players. Like the Cardinals, I talked about this on yesterday's show. If 
70% of this plan works in 2024, the Cardinals are making the playoffs. Irrelevant to relevant. While it seems like a vast zero to one jump. If things are done properly, it happens a lot quicker than you think. Garrett Williams played sparingly in 2023. I played nine games, started, started, uh, started the season injured uh, from a college injury. That's uh, through a, a lot of people that I trust in the draft world. Very people I don't have business being friends with. Um, told me that Garrett Williams would be a high second round pick, if not a fringe late first round pick, if he didn't get injured in college at Syracuse. So Garrett Williams, the, the cornerback room is up for the taking. Who's going to be CB1? Sean Murphy Bunting came in. He's going to be a good veteran presence, even though I think he's 25, veteran, quote unquote. Max Melton is set to be a starter day one. We'll see where Garrett Williams fits. But if Garrett Williams can come in and show more from the couple oh my God moments we saw from him in 2023, the Cardinals are going to be well ahead of schedule. And there's a lot of ifs, okay? It's, it's, uh, you know, it. we'll see where they play him, whether it be inside or outside. But all in all, irrespective of, of you know, scheme or base set, whatever Jonathan Gennon and Grellis want to throw out to opposing offenses, Garrett Williams' X factor is more safe than Paris Johnson Jr. in the sense that there's no real precedent for expectations from the cornerback room for the Cardinals in the last 10 years, aside from, you know, Patrick Peterson. There's been zero high impact talent in that room. Zero Pro Bowl talent in that room since Antonio Cromartie in 2014, I think. So we don't, we haven't seen it. And I, I discussed this with Max Melton yesterday, like, we don't know what a talented cornerback room looks like. We forgot. So even if he just improves upon last year and doesn't regress and stays on the field, the Cardinals cornerback room inherently is going to be better. The best ability is availability. That's him as an X factor. Can he stay healthy? He's a ball hawk. He had one interception. I think he had two pass deflections a handful of tackles in nine games. Like the numbers weren't there, but I don't think the numbers were ever like, like you're not looking playing corner. Like people, people get enamored with sack totals for pass rushers. People get even more enamored with interception totals. Like Trevon Diggs a couple of years ago before tearing his ACL. It's like, Oh, he's the best corner in the league. Eh. Seven interception. That's great. But how many PBUs? How many quarterback doesn't even look his way. Z. It's yards per target thrown. It's, you know, the, all the all the analytics and everything is, is way more in line for corners specifically than just interception numbers and tackles and pass breakups. Garrett Williams, the game wasn't too fast for him last year. And you could tell there was no, oh, no, he's not ready. Marco Wilson. Byron Murphy. Byron Murphy was statistically the worst corner in, in, in the NFL his rookie year. Marco Wilson was terrible his rookie season because he wasn't ready. Garrett Williams is going to be ready. Nick Rallis has them ready. Jonathan Gannon has them ready. And now he's got some running mates with Sean Murphy Bunting coming over, with Max Melton and Elijah Jones coming in ready and hungry. And you've got Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson, the ultimate failsafe over the top. So the X factor for him is different than Paris Johnson Jr. Paris Johnson Jr. is, you got to protect Kyler Murray or none of this is going to work. Needs to be elite for the Cardinals to win. Garrett Williams just needs to get progressively better and stay on the field. If he does, this team will be ready a lot faster. If he doesn't, they're going to be drafting corner maybe in the first round next year. Or the second. Or signing a free agent. If they can do it in-house, like I talked last offseason a lot or two off seasons ago, actually, with Monty Osport. Like, we need to see in 2023 what players will be good enough to save the Cardinals from having to draft that position the next draft. 
Garrett Williams, this is the year. Will they have to draft another corner in the top two rounds next year? Or do they already have Garrett Williams and Max Melton with star trajectory to be able to save that position and save those draft picks to draft somewhere else? This is the year. That's the X factor-ness. It's more future pacing for the position than just 2024. And it's going to be fascinating. If he can stay healthy, the dude is a mauler. Like these guys love to hit. And I say, I said it a lot yesterday. I said it a lot today. Having a corner who likes to hit people is something that is foreign to you and to me. We forgot about it. Patrick Peterson never hit people really hard. It's not what it was. Instilling fear like Legion of Boom. That's what this cornerback room could be. I'm not saying it's going to be at the, you know, at the heights of that. Plus, Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas were playing over the top. But the X factor variant variation for Garrett Williams is can he progress to save the Cardinals from having to draft the corner in year one or in round one and round two? I guess you could say the same for Max Melton, but Max Melton, his impact could be immediate because he's in a much better position to succeed than Garrett Williams was last year because the team is a lot more put together. It's going to be fascinating. Fascinating to see. BJ Ojolari needs to be a double-digit sack guy in 2024. If the Cardinals want to make the playoffs, if they want to win, if they want to progress, how does he get there? Discuss the next Lockdown Cardinals, your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is also brought to you by Bird Gang Travel Club, my boys. Okay, They put together the best packages to go on the road, enjoy a Cardinals game, enjoy a party, enjoy other fans between 50 and 500 fans on a given trip. Bird Gang Travel Club is where you want to be. They provide the best and only fan travel experiences for Cardinals road games. Okay, They're hitting Buffalo in week one, Orchard Park, Green Bay in week six, in South Beach, Miami, in week eight. These packages, listen to this. Packages include top-notch hotel stays for three or four nights, lower-level game tickets. If you want to go to Buffalo, they have tickets row five or closer to the field. They have parties each night with open bar and appetizers, unique fan tours of Lambeau Field and Niagara Falls, souvenir trip patch, State 48 uh, trip shirt, and more. It's like if you want to go experience a road game, there's not a better way to do it than letting the Bird Gang Travel Club just handle it for you. It's, I mean, it, it's it's an experience like none other. Visit birdgang.com to see all the packages today. And on top of that, they have payment plans available. If you don't want to shell it out in one shot, sign up by June 23rd and receive a signed Paris Johnson Jr. mini helmet for anyone in your package. Use the code locked on to receive a bonus signed mystery mini helmet or football from a current Cardinals player or alumni while supplies last. That's Birdgang.com. Year two players X Factor segment. I mean, this is the final segment of this series, I promise. <laughs> but I wanted to do this. I thought it was fun. Go check back over the last two weeks. I did offensive skill position players, veterans, X Factors, offensive rookie, X Factors, defensive veteran X Factors, defensive rookie X Factors. I did yesterday. And this is second year players. And it's important because this is what the compound interest looks like. You've got your base down to the studs at the end of the 2022 season, start of 2023 when Monty Osborne and Jonathan Gannon took over. This is when the build started, and B.J. Ojolari, Paris Johnson Jr., and Gary Williams are integral parts of that. They all showed flashes in varying degrees last season. And you, the, the honorable mention here is Michael Wilson, but I feel like Michael Wilson isn't necessarily an X-Factor. The Cardinals can win if he just doesn't perform well in 2024 because they've got help. You know, now the wide receiver room is like the deepest position on the team. It wasn't, and now it is. Marvin Harrison Jr., Greg Dorch in a, you know, in a featured role. Uh, Zay Jones was a massive pickup, and then Trey McBride. It's the deepest group, pass-catching group. That's what I call it. Just like the pass-rush room, the pass-catching group. You just you, I got a group in Trey McBride. It's the number one option right now. B.J. Ojolari. If he can get to 10 sacks, get to double-digit pressures, Carter's going to win a bunch of games this year. He's the anchor in the pass rush room right now. While that's fair, unfair, whatever it may be, his job, everybody's job is going to be a little bit easier this year. 
Another honorable mention is Dante Stills. I was going to put him as the third X factor, but he's still rotational. We'll see if he can take that leap to become the starter this year ahead of uh, Justin Jones and Bilal Nichols. We'll see. But what we do know is the interior defensive line is better. It's got more bodies, veterans. Dante Stills had a great year last year, all things considered. When Jonathan Ledbetter got hurt, he really kind of thrust in and played a lot, played many more meaningful snaps. Um, so the interior defensive lines will be able to blow up the pocket a little bit more frequently, you'd think. The Russian, like, run stuffing is going to be better. You'd think, well, they were 32nd in the league, over 140 yards rushing per game given up last year. So it's got to be better. <laughs> but BJ Ojolari, Cardinals haven't had a homegrown stud pass rusher Calais, long time. Like, when was the last time? I mean, Hassan Reddick for 15 minutes, and then they let him walk. But if B.J. Ojolari can move into that role and take over the, the, the pass rush room, and he's going to have help with Darius Robinson, another name that people aren't discussing at all, L.J. Collier, like, he's going to surprise some people. Played with Seattle, still sneaky young, was out for the entire season last year, got hurt in the preseason. The They're going to have more bodies on the outside. Damon Collins, we'll see. But B.J. Ojolari is going to lead the charge. He was he was drafted atop the second round after trading back with Tennessee, who took Will Levis. The Cardinals got an extra third rounder this year, and they ended up still getting their guy, the guy, the apple of my eye at the top of the second round from 2023. They ended up getting him anyways. B.J. Ojolari. If he can take that step to solidify the pass rush just a couple steps ahead of where they were last year, which is, isn't going to be difficult because they're going to be football played. So it's going to be better than last year. It was putrid last year. And you couple that with an improved cornerback room who's going to be more opportunistic, get some more hurries on, on opposing quarterbacks. They're going to be playing some young quarterbacks who are going to make mistakes. The Cardinals can make the playoffs. Now, the flip side of that is if B.J. Ojolari doesn't take that step, he had four sacks last year. If he doesn't take that step, they're going to be drafting a pass rusher in the first round next year, you would think. Uh, obviously predicated upon you know position and, and, and talent levels and things like that. But that's going to be the biggest position of need. And this is also coupled with, you know, last – when I did yesterday, I did Darius Robinson was the second rookie X-Factor. Like, it's going to be like a – team exercise and team projects for the pass rush room, especially because most of the guys are really young or need to prove themselves like Zayvon Collins. And we're going to find out like who the, who the apple of the pass rush's eye is. B.J. Ojolari showed a lot of good bend at the end of last year when he was, he came off injury, played a lot better. He looked very slow early on. I was like, Oh no. I think it was week one. I was like, Oh no, he's not fast. And then, you know, he actually got healthy and, you know, he, he got his legs under him and he, Obviously improved uh, mightily. But Paris Johnson Jr. needs to be elite. Garrett Williams needs to take that step forward. The Cardinals are drafting a corner in the top two rounds next year, one of the top two rounds next year. And if Bija Ojolari can sniff 10 sacks and double-digit pressures this year, the Cardinals could definitely make the playoffs. That's why the second-year guys as a collective group are all ma massive X-factors for the Cardinals as they move forward, hopefully you know, catapulting themselves back into relevancy. Alex Nancy, Locked on Cardinals. Please go to the YouTube channel. Search Locked on Arizona Cardinals. Hit that subscribe button, man. Remember, without you, there is no me. I'll talk to you on Friday.